the foundation of the religion of Islam is the belief in one and only sole creator and sustainer. And this creator and sustainer almighty God is the same for all the human beings. Only if you agree that our creator, sustainer and cherisher, one God is the same, then only can brotherhood be maintained in all religions. And this is the basis of all the religions. Religion, according to Oxford Dictionary, means a belief in a superhuman controlling power, a personal God or gods that deserve worship and obedience. So according to Oxford Dictionary, religion means belief in God. If you understand God, you understand that religion in the right perspective. Quran says in Surah Al-Imran chapter 3 verse number 64, Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah na'buda illallah. That you worship none but one almighty God. So the Quran says, let the people of different religions come to common terms. What is different, we can discuss tomorrow. Let us agree to follow what is common. And one thing common in all the religion is to believe and worship only one God. To understand any religion or to understand the concept of God in a religion, it is not appropriate to try and observe the followers of that religion. Because many a time the followers themselves may not be aware about the religion or the concept of the God in religion. The best and the most authentic way of understanding a religion or understanding the concept of God in a religion is to try and understand what the authentic scriptures of that religion has to speak about God. Let's try and understand the concept of God in the major religions in a nutshell. First, we try understand the concept of God in Hinduism. The two major and most authentic scriptures in the religion of Hinduism are the Vedas and the Upanishads. It's mentioned in the Chandogya Upanishad, chapter number 6, section number 2, verse number 1. Ikkam evidityam. God is only one without a second. This is a Sanskrit quotation. It's mentioned in the Sveta Setar Upanishad, chapter number 6, verse number 9. Nacha se kasaj, janitana chadipa. Of that God, he has got no parents, he has got no lord, he has got no father, he has got no mother, he has got no superior. It's mentioned in the Sveta Setar Upanishad, chapter number 4, verse number 19. As well as Yajur Ved, chapter number 32, verse number 3. Na tasya patima asti. Of that God, there is no Pratima. Pratima is a Sanskrit word which means, it means an image, a photograph, a painting, a picture, a sculpture, a statue, an idol. It says, of that God, there is no image, there is no picture, there is no painting, there is no portrait, there is no statue, there is no idol, there is no sculpture. And the Brahma Sutra of Hinduism, the fundamental creed of Hinduism is, Ekam Brahm Devutya Naste, Nena Naste Kinchan, Bhagwan Eki hai, Dusra Nahi hai, Nahi hai, Nahi hai, Zara bhi Nahi hai. There is only one God, not a second one. Not at all, not at all, not in the least bit. So if you read the Hindu scriptures, you shall understand the concept of God in Hinduism and understand Hinduism in the right perspective. Let's discuss the concept of God in Judaism. It's mentioned in the Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter number 6, verse number 4. Moses, peace be upon him, says, Shama Israelo, Adnahin Adnaikat, that your, O Lord, your Israel, the Lord, our God, is one Lord. It's mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 43, verse number 11. I, I am Lord, and there is no Savior besides me. It's mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 45, verse number 5. I am Lord and there is none else, there is no God besides me. It's mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 45, chapter number 46, verse number 9. I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. It's further mentioned in the book of Exodus, chapter number 20, verse number 2 to 5, as well as in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 5, verse number 79. Almighty God says, Thou shall have no other God besides me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image of anything, of any likeness in the heaven above, in the earth beneath, in the water beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor serve them, for I, thy God, thy Lord, is a jealous God. 
So if you read the Old Testament or if you read the Torah, you shall understand the concept of God in Judaism and understand Judaism in the right perspective. Before we discuss the concept of God in Christianity, I would like to clarify a few points. Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of Almighty God. We believe he was the Messiah, translated Christ. We believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention, which many modern day Christians today do not believe. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. The Christians and the Muslims, we are going together. One may ask, then where is the parting of ways? The parting of ways is that many Christians believe, or most of the Christians believe, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he claimed divinity. They believe that he was Almighty God. In fact, if you read the Bible, there is not a single unequivocal statement. There is not a single unambiguous statement. In the complete Bible, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God, or where he says, worship me. In fact, if you read the Bible, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 28. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, my father is greater than I. Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 29, my father is greater than all. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 28. I cast out devil with the spirit of God. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 11, verse number 20. I with the finger of God cast out devil. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just. For I seek not my will, but the will of my Father. Anyone who says I seek not my will, but the will of Almighty God, he's a Muslim. As I mentioned, Muslim means a person who submits his will to God. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, not my will, but the will of Almighty God. So in Arabic we say he's Muslim. Therefore we say Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was one of the mightiest messengers of Almighty God. And he further clarified in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 24, he said that the words that you hear are not mine, but my Father's who has sent me. It's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 17, verse number 3, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, This is life eternal so that you may know one true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. It's clearly mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter number 2, verse number 22. It says, Ye men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs, which God did by him and you are witness to it. A man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs, which God did by him and you are witness to it. And when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was asked, that which is the first of the commandment, he repeated verbatim what was said by Moses, peace be upon him, earlier. It's mentioned in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 12, verse number 29. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, Shama Israelo Adna Hainu Adnai Khad, which means, Hero Israel, the Lord, our God, is one Lord. So if you read the Bible, you should understand the concept of God in Christianity and understand Christianity in the right perspective. Let's discuss the concept of God in Islam. The best reply that any Muslim can give you regarding the concept of God in Islam is quote to you Surah Ikhlas. That is chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4, which says, Kul hu Allah ahad. Say he is Allah one and only. Allah hu samad. Allah the absolute and eternal. Lam yulid wa lam yulad. He begets not nor is he begotten. Wa lam yakul law kufana. There is nothing like him. This is a four-line definition of Almighty God. Any person says so and so candidate is God. If he falls in, if he passes this four test, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting as God. The first is say he's one and only. The second is he should be absolute and eternal. The third, he begets not nor is he begotten. And fourth, that nothing like unto him anything in this world. This is a four-line definition of Almighty God, which we call as the litmus test for theology. It is the touchstone of theology. And further the Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 108, that revile not, abuse not those who they worship God besides Allah. Lest, lest in the ignorance they will revile, they will abuse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Quran prohibits any Muslim from speaking bad, from reviling, from abusing those who other people worship God besides Allah. Lest in their ignorance, they will abuse Allah. So to understand the concept of God, 
In Islam, we have to read the Quran. Allah, 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 Allah,